Chairman, uh, Charity Council, uh, President of SIAS, my brothers and sisters, good morning. Uh, let me first introduce myself. You may find that why I like to do it. Because during a coffee break, when I walk around, I realized that you all did a background check on me. <laughs> Actually, today, uh, you want to do background check on someone, you don't need to have a private eye. You just go to Google. You key the name of the person. I can tell you what is in the net is the net forever. So I must well confess to you of my colorful background. Many of y'all would have known that uh, during my early days, I chased after criminals. Yeah. In fact, I not only chased after normal criminals. In my CID days, I chased after hardcore criminals. Then, I decided that I shall chase after unhealthy people. I'm very glad that today on the table, I don't see Coke, but I see plain water. <laughs> I suggest that later on when you go out to have your buffet, remember, portion control. <laughs> then after that, I move on to chase after volunteers. And some of my, some of my brothers and sisters from my PA, uh, they were here. And now who do I chase after? Then people say, ah, now you're chasing after charities. But I'm not here to chase after charities. I always tell people that you got a choice. Do you want to be my friends or not be my friends? If you be my friends, then I want to assure you that you will not be alone. I will walk the journey with you all the way. That is my assurance to every charity, big, small, especially the small charities. But you choose not to be my friends, then you know what is my reputation. I leave no stone unturned. Which means to say that when I look into the matters, if you like, I don't rush. I chew until slowly, until I hit the bone. But the fact that all of us are here today, this morning, means that we are all friends, brothers and sisters. And because we are brothers and sisters, I thought I want to share with you a couple of things. First thing I'd like to share is, yes, I think earlier the MC had mentioned that we have a lot, big, big amount of charity dollars. But I also want to share with you, read the annual report, the annual report clearly reflects that our charity dollars are shrinking. And it doesn't help in this economic uncertainty. Donors today are a bit apprehensive because of the, the uncertainty down the journey, down the road. But in spite of all the uncertainty, and in spite that the charity dollars went down, I realized that not all charities see a decline in charity dollars. In fact, they buck the trend and see an increase in charity dollars. A good example is Mercy Relief, and some extend the Red Cross. Their charity dollars actually went up. Since we are brothers and sisters, since we are friends, I thought I'd share with you their secret. I went and analyzed them and see what is their secret of success. And I finally realized there's only one word, and that is transparency. If you go to their websites, you'll find that they deliberately intentionally, responsibly put out reports on all their activities. Not only how much they have collected, that one is, is, is a, but 
how the charity dollars is being spent, and not only that, what is the impact to the beneficiary? Every program is accountable for, and they pull out to the open. And you know what they have created? They have created trust. Because if I am a donor in today's environment where it's difficult, I want to make sure that every dollar I donated go to the right purpose for what I intended for. Whoever give me the assurance will attract my charity dollars. And that's how they did it. So my brothers and sisters, we are all in the charities, in the charity sectors. It's very important that we make visible, make visible, transparency on how we use the charity dollars because they are given to us on trust. We are the steward. We are not the owner of the dollar. We are the steward. Talking about friends, I have a particular group of friends or brothers and sisters which are very close to my heart. Many of you all are here today and there's a small charities. The big charities, well, they have the resources to look after themselves, but it's the small charities that, that I have a, a special attention in my heart. And for small charities, it's, it's, I, I, I'm very sad sometimes when I speak to charities, which many of you all will know, I've gone around speaking to many of you all, is that you tell me that it's not that I don't want to comply, but I don't know how to comply. Not that I don't want to comply, but I don't know how to comply. That tell me that I need to reach out to you and I need to support you and I need to walk the journey with you. And that's what I intended to. First, in the area of people. The charity sectors must have our own fair share of talents. We must have our own fair share of talents. And this is where talent is not only at the board level, but more importantly, also talent at your professional staff. Yet we know that we, we, people who join charity are not for the dollar. They join the charity because for the heart and the passion. So I'm now working very closely I've deepened the relationships with our center of non-profit leadership and organizations that proactively outreach to the professionals, especially professionals with the heart to serve, to give, and then pair it up with you who need help. And even if you don't need help, to pair up with you so that together we can raise the professionalism of the charities we will demand our fair share of the talent. Second, is in the area of process. Yes, I have feedback from some of you all and say that, look, some of your process is a little bit complicated. I hear you, my brothers and sisters, especially the small charities. I want to assure you that I'm going through the process of simplification. I believe simple is powerful. No point of giving you 50, 100 pages, but actually, if I can give you three pages and you comply with the three pages, I think that makes a world difference. And do it well. Because these are basic foundation piece for us in charity. It was mentioned, you know, we are in the business, but we are together, big or small. The weakest link among all of us is this. If one charity gets into trouble, regardless of whether you're big or small, it will erode the confidence of the public. And when the public confidence gets eroded, all of us will see a further decline in charity dollars. So we are in this together. We are in this together. The last thing has to do again with small charities. You notice this morning I talked a lot on small charities. And that is the area of cost. I acknowledge that with inflation, sometimes costs can be a little bit burden for you. And this is where I hope to relieve some of your burden. For a start, 
I'm very proactive now talking to your Apex organization. If you have an Apex organization, for example, in the charity side, I have worked very closely in collaborations, maybe the National Churches, Council of Churches, or the Buddhist Federation, Taoist Federation, Hindu Endowment Board, the Malay self-help organizations. The idea is this, is that with shared services, instead of you incurred the cost yourself, why don't we pool our resources together? Better still, we find someone to get to, to make, because of the heart, do it such that it's then offered to you at the rate that you cannot say no. Yes, I can tell you I did it for the risk management. Many of you all, I'm glad that some of my brother and sister this morning were sitting outside. I asked, what is the status regarding to the risk management community or practice? And I'm very happy to hear that it's alive, kicking, number is growing. But I must thank KPMG. I think my KPMG sister is here somewhere. Sister, where are you? Ah, yeah, yeah my sister is here. And KPMG kindly offered 100 free consultancy hours. <laughs> Since I make this officially, I shall demand for another 100 hours. <laughs> no, but, but what I hope to do, but what I hope to do is to tap the talents from not only KPMG, but the rest of the accounting firm, the lawyer firm, and many others, so that they become, they do charity at where they do best. Because they come, they bring certain level of professionalism in them. I always say, skill-based charity is very powerful. Not everybody needs to go and help to clean the home, especially where you've got a higher order skill which is highly need by others' charity. I can group you all together under the shared services, and in the shared services, we can then offer it to the rest of the charity. So my brothers and sisters, in conclusion, somebody asked me what is my job as a COC, Commissioner of Charity. Is my job a policeman? In some instance, yes, if you decided not to be my friend. But 99.999 are my friends. As, as, as my friends, my job is to enable you so that together we can build the charity sectors, a thriving charity sectors, where giving is the norm, where giving is day to day, where giving is our way of life. More importantly, where people need help, help is available. So that together, we can overcome odds, regardless of whether good time or bad time. I give you the assurance, you will not be alone. I will walk the journey with you. Thank you and have a good conference. Thank you.